Well, good morning, Flag Church. I love the church as well. Not just this church, the Capital C Church. There's no other organization on the planet that's as large because it lets everyone participate. It's got the largest participation. The church has the widest distribution across the planet. It's got the longest continuation of any organization, trumping any government or business. It's got the fastest expansion. It's growing faster than any disease on the planet. It's got the highest motivation. The motivation is love. It provides the strongest authorization because God's the one that authorized it. It provides the simplest education administration because the administration is simple and it provides for God's conclusion to, to all of history. I love the local church and what God has done in the local church. We've been talking about in this series in August, some of you, oh, by the way, my name is Mark. I get to be your pastor. It's good to have you back from the summer. The, uh, some of you haven't been here past couple of weeks, so we'll do a quick recap. We've been talking about how the existence of the church, when you look back to the first century secular history, how in the world did the church even make it out of the first century? But it did. It's unexplainable, yet it's undeniable. And every Christian church has the same mission. Let's go tell people about Jesus, but visions how you carry it out. And we're trying to build vertical and horizontal relationships. That's our goal. That's our heartbeat. That's where everything flows out of that. We've got that banner outside. And uh, some of you have already signed it. If you haven't signed it and you love your local church, it doesn't mean you agree with everything. It doesn't mean you drank the Kool-Aid kind of thing. It just means like, man, I love where I go to church. Yeah. No, I wish they would sing this song because it's my favorite. And I w I've been here 16 years. We've never sung my favorite song yet. Any guesses on what it is besides from uh, the wife? My Sharona, no, no, no. <laughs> Although, I remember that. I remember that song, all three chords of it, yeah. The uh, Almighty Fortress is our God. Because most everything we do is guitar-based, and that don't work on guitar if you play guitar at all. Never sung it yet, because we're not about what, uh, what needs to be for our preference. Anyways, so if you love your church, would you go ahead and, and take, take a few moments and just say, I love the local church because, and just, just write down your reason, man. We'd love to go ahead and get that thing filled up. Uh, so you can do that right after service. So if you've been at Flag Forever, what we've been talking about is review and remind, but hopefully a, a reigniting of why you bothered to come back for the second and third time and for the third and fourth year that you've been coming. But if you're new, this is a great time to get clued in before you think about connecting and committing to a local church. We came across this definition a couple years ago, what bold leadership is. It's having clarity around an unreasonable commitment to something that has to be. So we've been answering the question, what has to be at this church? Other churches can operate differently, it's totally cool. Uh, First Naz is doing some big, uh, big shebang today, one service at 10 o'clock. If you drive by there, they got a fence set up and they got some inflatables. And uh, uh, I'm glad they got great weather because we got an outside thing this afternoon too. We got great weather for it. And uh, so when I drove by there the other day, I saw the, saw the orange fence. And so I texted their, their pastor, Kyle. I go, hey Kyle, what's with the orange fence? Beer garden? Question mark. <laughs> It was great. They got, they got things going on, great stuff. So different churches operate different way. No one walk out of here and say that First Naz is having a beer garden today. I was joking that sarcasm and satire, and he received it as such. What has to be, what will we have an unreasonable commitment to, and what are we going to be clear about? So in these core values, there's no claim to originality. Some of them we have totally stolen and plagiarized from other churches, not because we want to be like them, but because that's something that we're already trying to do. We'll just use their verbiage because it works really, really well. It's memorable, it's portable. The, uh, but the goal is not originality, the goal is effectiveness. And it may not be that we've arrived there, but that's where we're aimed. And nothing in these core values should be something that's brand new. And if you've been coming for a while, go, I didn't know we thought that was important. No, these should be things that we're already focusing on. And that is pretty obvious. They should be observations instead of declarations. And so we went through the first five last week, and we'll re recap them very quickly here this morning. The first one is the only one that's in order, and the most powerful one, and important one, is uh, the Word of God is the only non-negotiable. Not style, not structure, not service schedule, but the Word of God. There's no negotiating there. That's what we're going to stick with, and we're going to stay with that. The, uh, we're going to meet needs and plant seeds. We did that this past Thursday, and we celebrated that a few moments ago. The being uh, good words aren't just enough. We need good works as well. And so we did that this past Thursday. That's going to be a core value that we're going to continue to pour in to people. In the same way, number three, we want to be a perfect place for imperfect people. If somebody walks in and they're upside down, they are messed up, they are broken, yeah, we want to love them just the same as if someone walks in that looks like they have it all together because the person that looks like they have it all together, how many of you know they don't have it all together? The, everyone in this building has got issues. Some of us just hide it a whole lot better than others. He didn't, Jesus didn't come for the well. He came for the sick. And so we want to be that perfect place for imperfect people. Number four core value is belonging 
is the beginning to believing and becoming. We used to phrase it like this, please don't attend a local church, connect to one. This is a, uh, something by an author that's a friend of ours. It was like, that's excellent. Because there's some people that belong here. They feel like this is their church. They, got, they wear the t-shirt. They even wear the t-shirt. They've got all that. Yet they're still not where they need to be in believing. And they know that. And they know that we know that. And they've not yet gotten to the spot in their faith where they've matured in their faith and have made some harsh decisions that they know they need to. And they know that we wouldn't agree with them on some of the decisions they're making. But they know that we still love them. So they feel like, yeah, that's where I go to church. Yeah but no, I'm not there yet. But chances are, if we didn't let them feel like they belonged, they'd never get to believing and becoming. And then number five, we're going to communicate grace and truth. We're going to go full go on grace and not soft sell grace. Grace is going to be 100%, but so is truth. The church is best and the only organization on the planet that will go full go on both. If we're not careful, we look for a balance of grace and truth. If you want more on that, you can get last week's message. If you have a bulletin, go ahead and pull it out right now. We'll get started this morning. If not, lift your hand. We'll make sure to get one to you. The first point today is this. We are contributors, not consumers. Contributors, not consumers. Jesus was talking to his disciples, and he was saying, hey, guys, you see all those bosses in the world, all those non-Jewish leaders that that lord it over them and play the rough boss man, and, and they just throw their authority and their power around? That's how they lead? And then Jesus goes, not so with you. Not like, that's not how we're gonna do it. That's not how we're going to do it. Luke chapter 22. Instead, the greatest among you should be like the youngest. Any babies in the family? Babies? Any babies in the family that always got picked on all the time? Yep, yep, yep. Not the greatest among you should be the youngest. If you're the baby, you go tell your brother and sister, Jesus said I'm the greatest. Mm -hmm. Just like you and Muhammad Ali. Yep. And Jesus said, and the one who rules, like the one who serves. And then Jesus sets up the rhetorical question. For who's greater? The one who's at the table? Or the one who serves? Well, of course. Isn't that the one who's at the table? But Jesus says, hey, look at me. I'm, I'm among you as someone who serves. That's what we're called to do. Contributors, not consumers. As a church, we want to hold as a core value that Jesus was right when he said it's more blessed to give than receive. He didn't say it's wrong to receive. I mean, come on. Someone walks up to you and says, hey, God told me to give you this $100 bill. How many of you are going to go, no, 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 no? You'd be going, thank you, may I have another? <laughs> That'd be just fine with you. It'd be just fine with all of us in the room. But it's more blessed to give than receive because we are called to serve. We're called to serve. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the Babylon Bee. It's a website that's Christian satire. If you're familiar with the Onion online, it's a Christian version of the Onion. And there was an article there the other day, article, quote unquote, that said, uh, local man praying earnestly if he should volunteer at church one hour every other month. Hmm, like really should I do that? We are called to be contributors, not consumers. We are called to serve. The Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. A local church is designed for you until you become a part of it, then you should be on mission with them. We are a hospital for sinners, not a resort for the redeemed. And so I need to do a physical object lesson here, and I'll need your participation. I need two things from you. First off, figure out how long you've been attending Flag Church. If this is your first Sunday, you've been attending 22 minutes. The, uh, but figure out how long you've been attending Flag Church, and I need everyone in the room to please stand. You will not be asked to hold hands or cry. It's okay. So far, so good. Okay, if you've been attending Flag Church for one month or less, please be seated. Two months, three months, four months, five months, six months or less, please be seated. One year or less, please be seated. Two years or less, please be seated. The people that are still standing were here when we moved into this building and we were having two services. And one Sunday I had to get up and say, hey, we think it's time to go back to three services. And they're willing to be flexible for that, though they know it may have caused uh, them to have opportunity to serve a little bit more and more might be required of them. The reason we went from two services to three was because we are contributors and not consumers. Because it wasn't about, hey, we got plenty of space, we don't need any more people, we're paying the bills, but we need to create capacity for people who weren't here yet. You know who those people who weren't here yet? It's those who are seated right now. Those who are standing, we're willing to say, okay, we'll flex from what's working for us so we can make room for those who aren't here yet. If you've been coming three years or less, please be seated. Four years or less, please be seated. The people still standing, remember what it's like to not worship in this room, but to worship in the auditorium where the kids meet. 
If you don't know what that's like after service, go ahead and peek in there and go, <laughs> and just feel claustrophobic when you look at it. But we remember what that's like. If you've been attending five years or less, please be seated. Six years or less, please be seated. These are the people that didn't leave the church when their crazy pastor got up and said, we're going to raise money for three years so we can build a building that we're sitting, standing in right now. And they were told straight up, the building's not for you. Straight up, and you can ask them later, the money we're raising is not for you to be more comfortable, it's not for you to be convenient, it's not for, the, for your pastor so he can quit doing three hard services and get back to doing one or two services. Ha, that didn't last anyways. The reason we're raising funds is so we can build a building for people who are not here yet. If you're standing, you're surrounded by your fruit because the reason we raised the money was for the people who are now sitting in this room. The people that are sitting in this room right now, the day is coming when you will be challenged to do the same. That, hey, we sense that it's time to move forward. Will you go ahead and give? Will you serve for people that you don't even know yet, that you haven't even invited yet, that haven't even married your daughter yet so that we can have a place and capacity for them? Where am I at, six years? Seven years or less, please be seated. Eight years or less, please be seated. Nine years or less, please be seated. The people that are still standing were here when their crazy pastor got up and said, hey, we've been doing two services, but we're going to go to three services now. We're nuts. And we did it. Three services in a room that holds 120 people like sardines. Ten years. It's been coming for ten years or less, please be seated. Eleven years or less, please be seated. If it's eleven years, you were probably here the day we dedicated the kids' zone. The building out back. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. It's, 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 not, it's not science. Stand back up, Trinity. There you go. 12 years or less. 13 years or less. If they're still standing, they remember what it's like to not worship on this property. But this church used to meet in rented facility in front of Quality Floor in front by what used to be Sutherland's and Molly Chevrolet, that little building that's Gerard, Gerard Medical Center. That's where we met. And these people said, yes, pastor, let's go break ground on that land on North Rouse and let's go ahead and give money and let's build. Pastor, do you know how to build? <laughs> no. <laughs> Contributors, not consumers. That's what we're called to be. Can you say amen? amen? You may be seated. Thank you. Thank you. A hospital for sinners, not a resort for the redeemed. Whether it's the poorest schools in town or the Chamber of Commerce, down and out or up and out, it does not matter. If you are lost, uh, heads up, fly church is coming for you. If you're found, will you come with us for those who are lost? And if not, then this might be the wrong church for you because that's where we're going and that's where we're challenging everyone to do is to come with us for those who are lost. One of the things that we do to try and love people and to encourage them is we if they if come the first time and they fill out one of the cards, we take cookies to them. Just like that. We used to buy them at Walmart, but M Amazon works great. The, uh, we package them up like that, and the staff, the pastoral staff, we drive them to the four corners of the four states, pretty much, it feels like. And uh, we, we drop them off if they're within 30 minutes, and we think there's a chance they might come back. Oh, my goodness, Keeslings, yeah, all the, way to, all the way to wherever it is you live, out in the middle of nowhere, man. The uh, Farlington, yeah, because it was on my way. I was going to Kansas City, so we dropped the cookies off, and that's why they came. And it was your neighbor that said, if their tractor's not there, they're out working in the field. I remember that specifically. We don't mind doing that. But you realize all your staff lives within like two miles or three miles of this local church. Yet this local church covers the entire area. So wisdom dictates that it's time that your staff can stop delivering the cookies and the church start delivering the cookies. Would you consider to be part of the cookie team? So we're launching that today. If you're willing to be someone that would have some of those cookies, and all, it, you don't have to have a conversation. We give you all the training. It takes all the five minutes to give you the training. If you know how to operate a GPS, it'd be someone that already lives nearby you. You'd get contacted. The cookies would already be at your house. Don't eat them before you deliver them. The cookies would already be at your house. And so we thought about how can we let people know how to let us know they want to be part of the cookie team. C is for cookie. That's good enough for me. At the bottom of your connection card is an A, B, C, D, E. What is C for? C is for cookie. <laughs> Circle C on your card if you're going, Pastor, if you got someone in my neighborhood that needs cookies dropped off, I'm your man, I'm your woman, I'm your teenager. I'll be part of that. We also could use some people for a tailgate team for the Chi Alpha right now and our Green Thumb team. If you're interested, just put that on your prayer card. So we're challenging to be consumers, excuse me, contributors, not consumers. Could you imagine your first Sunday you walk in the door at Flag Church and there's nothing here but consumers? 
waiting to see what people are going to do for them. One of the reasons you came back is there are people ready to serve you. So I encourage you to do that. Next, and the next ones will move pretty quick here. Next core value, everything is an experiment. Everything is an experiment. Playing it safe is not always the wisest choice. And we want to have an attitude and a, and a core value and a culture that risk and failure are acceptable. We recently had something that we started knocking the door on and we were considering an opportunity to maybe expand Flag Church in Fort Scott. We kicked the tires on it. We were unable to find a partnership that was going to work for where we're at right now. And we don't have the staff capacity to operate church out of the movie theater up there or out of a, out of a school facility. So we don't have that capacity right now. We couldn't find a suitable partner. So we're on hold. And it might be a permanent hold. It may not work out at all. It may be a conversation that's going to bear fruit five years down the road. We don't know. So we're totally on, on hold for that. But we will still continue to explore any and all viable opportunities to build vertical and horizontal relationships that are within the area that we can do. And some people will tell you that if you fail the plan, you plan to fail. Absolutely. But just because you plan doesn't mean it won't fail. <laughs> you might plan and it still might not work out. That's not a reason to quit. That's a reason to go knock on some other door then. Can you imagine this church, if Flag Church had never taken a risk? Our greatest leaps forward have been our biggest risks we've taken with staff, facilities, and outreaches. Do you recognize the land that picture is? You sitting on it. You're sitting on that land. That's Randy Burke's truck. That's 2001. Oh, crud. How many of you weren't even born by 2001? <laughs> Some of you are so young. <laughs> the, uh, would you connect to a church that holds as its core value that everything is an experiment, mistakes are allowed, and failures are acceptable? Next, rows are good, circles are better. And we'll talk more about this in the near future. But life groups, Sunday connection is not enough. The scripture is very plain and clear. You need to connect to Jesus, but it's also very plain and clear over 50 times in the New Testament. You need to connect to one another because you have to love one another, serve one another, sing to one another, bear one another's burdens, forgive one another. You can't one another if you're never with one another. You can't one another face to face if you're only sitting shoulder to shoulder. So we think rows are good, but circles are better. Imagine a situation comes up in your life, a major life event, maybe a good one, maybe a bad one. It's a graduation party. Uh, it's your addiction you're fighting. It's a moving party that you have. It's you're celebrating a wedding. You're battling a lengthy illness or you're having to have a funeral in your family. Who are you going to invite? Well, you got to invite your family, some that you, don't, you want to be there, some you don't want to be there, but their family, you have to invite them, no choice. Who else? Who else is there in the circle of your life in that high situation or low situation that you really want there because of what they bring, but you know they really want to be there and it's not out of obligation. If your spouse dies, some of your coworkers are gonna show up out of obligation, but who do you want there because they're that close to you? Where'd you meet them? 505 on a Wednesday night? Softball league? What about those that you met in the local church? And over time you found out you're different but you're so connected, it's almost like you're closer with them than you are with your blood family. Rows are good, circles are better. And, and we want to have that. And when I said this last week, what, can you imagine if everyone had a circle in this church and that loneliness had no one to hang out with at Flag Church? I know I said that last week, but it bears repeating. That loneliness would have no one to hang out with. What would break my heart is if someone could walk in this morning and leave this morning and not get connected to somebody and not get a handshake, not get a smile, or if they were open for a little mini side hug. And they would walk out of here lonely. That would break my heart. No one needs to walk out of here lonely. Uh, next, excellence matters. Excellence matters. It matters in the restaurants you go to, the businesses you go to, the doctor's offices you go to, the school classrooms. When excellence is present, we take it for granted. Oh, by the way, side note, I got informed in between first and second service that the fill in the blanks were out of order. That's not excellent. <laughs> know that, own it, and disappointed. But not going to chastise anybody, but that's not where we're aimed. That's not where we're aimed. And that's not something that we want to continue. And so we'll check, the, check the, how that happened and try not, to, try not to do that again. I'm just thankful it's not Easter this morning. Yeah. So excellence matters. When excellence is present, you take it for granted. But when excellence is absent, it screams at you. When the bathroom in the doctor's office is filthy, ugh. when you get something in your food at the restaurant that's not supposed to be there, Excellence matters. Not perfection, 
as we prove every Sunday, but not luxury either. So we're going to have an unreasonable commitment to excellence. Here's what you don't see, unless you're part of the worship team probably. Even the worship team doesn't see this. That sidewalk out front uh, by the doors you walk in, Steve Snyder blows those off every Sunday before anyone else gets here. That's why all those rocks that your kids walk around and kick all over the place and do all that, let them keep kicking the rocks. Let them have fun. We're just going to put them back because it's excellent. That's what Steve does before anyone else gets here in the morning. Blows all that off so that's nice and clean. And when there's been a big rain and the mulch is everywhere, it takes them a little longer. <laughs> takes them a little longer. The landscaping looks amazing out there. You know why? Because people work on it. But right now, crazily enough, our green thumb team leader decided to get married and move out of state. Does God stir in your heart? Is that something that you like so much and you're good at and you're willing to do that? Excellence. A warm, attentive welcome in the parking lot and the front doors even if they are holding lightsabers out there. A safe and secure nursery, that whatever you hear off of this platform is clear and helpful. Every physical environment communicates something. If something is clean and clutter-free, it says we were expecting you. By the way, we're clutter-free out there, but that's because we know how, how to hide our clutter. You have clutter at your house too, don't you? But if company's coming over, where does it go? Closet, closet, mm-hmm. Uh, you want every physical environment communicates something communicates organization we're serious about what we're doing and we don't want to waste your time it communicates safe hopefully we value your kids it communicates orderly we know what we're doing or at least we're faking it and making you think that we know what we're doing we're doing our best on that because without excellence we demotivate the team members that serve and they're like eh, they don't care about this why should we care about it without excellence we disrespect the guests that you're inviting and without excellence we dishonor our founder who died for a church that should be glorious without spot or wrinkle and before the criticism comes let me just say it pastor excellence never won anyone to jesus absolutely true excellence alone isn't going to accomplish anything but a lack of excellence will repel people before we even get a chance to tell them about jesus that's why excellence is not optional for us. It matters. It matters. How do you respond when you encounter excellence? That's why you go back to Chick-fil-A, even though it's overpriced. <laughs> Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart, as if you're working for the Lord, not for Flag Church. Since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving when you're in the parking lot. It is the Lord Christ you are serving when you are holding a baby. It is the Lord Christ when, someone, when, so, when you're filling up a cup and you're handing it to someone you've never met before. It is the Lord Christ you are serving when you get here at 7.30 on Sunday to get your instruments or your tech ready, even though you were already here on Thursday night rehearsing. It's the Lord Christ we're serving. And because we're serving Him, excellence matters. Lastly, invitations alter people's paths. Finally got one that's a tongue twister. Invitations alter people's paths. John chapter 1. Philip found Nathanael and told him, Hey, we found the one Moses wrote about in the law, about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. What does Philip get back from Nathanael? An argument. Nazareth? Can anything good come from there? And so Philip proceeded to argue with Philip, with Nathaniel about all the situations that could be and then send him a bunch of Google references so that Philip could get them. No, Philip didn't go there. Philip just said, come and see. Come and see. Are you intimidated to invite someone to church sometimes? Sometimes it's difficult. I don't know what to answer. I don't know what to say. Don't say anything. Just tell them, come and see. Come and see. The next three little points I want to share with you totally stole from, stole from North Point Church in uh, Atlanta, Georgia, but they fit. If you want to be someone who's a bringer and bringing people, these are three clues, three things that when you hear it, maybe something goes off in your brain going, this is a good time to invite somebody. This is a good time. They're called the three knots. The first one is this, not in church. In your conversation, and for whatever reason it comes up, hey, I like your shirt. Oh, what church do you go to? Oh, well, we're not in church right now. Boom. Oh, you're not in church? You should come check out my church on a Sunday, man. We'd love to have you. Just come and see. You're not asking for help. Don't carry around a membership card and stick it in their face. Just, hey, come and see. The next knot. Ah, oh, it's not going well, man. Life's not going well. We're getting sick. Relationships. Uh, 
man, I went back to school, not good, not going well. Really? I'm sorry it's not going well. Maybe you need some encouragement. Why don't you come check out my church? I always feel encouraged when I leave. You should come and see. So not in church, not going well, or not prepared for. Oh, man, we got a baby coming. Oh, hey, I just changed jobs, man. Oh, my car just blew up, and I don't know how to fix Back before they put computers in them things, I knew how to fix them things, but now they just got so many computers in them, I don't know what to do. Oh, really? Wait, you should all come to my church this Sunday. Just, just come and see. I feel, I feel encouraged when I leave, and maybe you would too. Question. How do you feel, and yes, I'm talking about heart here, not mine. How do you feel toward the person that invited you to a local church and helped you experience Christ? And maybe it wasn't you. Maybe it was they invited your dad who hated church because he was drugged to it his entire life. Or maybe they invited your grandpa who was an alcoholic, but someone looked in his face and said, you need to get off the booze and get in church. And grandpa spit on him and then went that Sunday and went down to the altar, got saved, old style, used Kleenex, all that kind of stuff, went home, threw the alcohol away. How do you feel toward that person? Are you ticked off at them? Are you mad? Of course not. You're like, thank you so much. I don't know what I'd be missing out on if I wasn't connected to Christ through a local church. Now, let's turn it 360. How does that person feel when they step back and they look and they go, wow, look what happened with my invitation. I, I just invited them. I invited his grandpa a long time ago, and I'm coming to his grandpa's funeral now, and here he is walking across, and wow, you know how he's feeling? He's feeling like this, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Imagine an entire church feeling, yeah, because you invited someone. Here we go. Here we go. I did this when I was practicing. You invited someone to a place that, mat that excellence mattered to them, that they ended up getting involved in a circle. Even though they tried some experiments, they got involved in a circle. Uh, they came to a place and they found out people were willing to contribute to them. And they, the, the friend that you invited received grace and truth. And they started feeling like they belonged here before they ever believed and became anything. They were imperfect when they got here, all because we meted their needs and planted their seeds because we didn't deviate from the word of God. What could happen in their life? That's what happened in my life. What if it happened in yours? What if it happened in someone who's not here yet because we need to knock down another wall one of these days or God forbid at a Saturday night service? Whatever it takes, man. Whatever it takes. What if everyone at Flag felt like that? That feeling is waiting for you. Bring someone. Can I get those two object lessons that I need? Who's got those? Zeke? Steve? I should ask for them earlier. I'm sorry. So we've created tools in the past you know, to help you invite people, wear a shirt, start a conversation, those kind of things. Because invitations are what's going to change people's paths in a total way. And so we just created a new tool that if it's something you're interested in, that would be good. Uh, if not, that's up to you. You saw them when you came in the door here. Thank you, sir. But we figured, we had this idea a couple, a year ago or so, but, you know, election year, this might work a little bit better. And so we had these made. Uh, this is the Republican one. This is the Democrat one. If you turn them around, it's, it's pretty, pretty much the same. And for some of you, it's, it's a no-brainer. I ain't putting one of those things in my yard for nothing. Totally cool. Totally cool. For some of you, it's like, give me two now. I'm going to put one in my yard and one in my neighbor's yard. That'll start a conversation. Yeah, it would. <laughs> it would. It would do that. And some of you are going, if I do that, Wow. For me, in my neighborhood, in my past, and people who know me, this would be like publicly identifying with Jesus Christ in your water baptism. People are going to see that sign in my yard and go, you go to a church, and you'll go, yep, just come and see. Just, yeah, I know. Yeah, I know I don't live it all yet. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah, I know you heard that word in my mouth last week. I know. Why don't you, why don't you just come and see? Why don't you just come and see? So we've, we've got these if you're interested. Uh, they're $5 a piece, covers cost. If you don't have the $5 and money's tight, you just look them in the eye and say, I'm going to put that in my yard, but I don't have the money right now. Can I still have one? And they'll absolutely give you one. No questions asked. Absolutely. If you've got the funds and you want to buy one and buy one for someone else that can't, just go right ahead and pay $10 instead of 5 Totally up to you. Uh, we don't know if we're going to get stuck with 75 of them or if we're going to run out of them. 
All we know is this is a uh, worship team, please come. All we know is there's another opportunity for an invitation to happen because invitations will alter people's paths. It altered mine, it altered yours, and it may be two generations before. Stand with me, if you would, please. Where are we headed? Well, like that church did in 1912 in Pittsburgh, Kansas, we're headed to see if we can reach 1,000 people because every number's got a name, every name's got a story, every story matters to God, and over 30 stories are getting baptized this afternoon. Can you say amen? Amen. 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 Let's bow our heads and our hearts. Father, we bless you in the name of Christ. We thank you for your local church. We sense your presence, and we want to rejoice and sing to you and love you while we're in your presence this morning.